there's a ton of information out here on running little kilns like this. So I'm gonna to try to answer some of the common questions that I found and the questions I had when I began trying to figure out what I wanted to do um, in terms of building this kiln and if I actually wanted to invest in the kiln. So I've consolidated all that information and hopefully it's all the relevant information you would need to start drying your own lumber. Okay, so to the point. First thing you need to know, it's not rocket science. It's really not that hard to build a kiln, especially a little kiln like this. You don't have to have a lot. Really, all you need is a well-insulated space, whether that's this or whether that's in your shop or a closet or a basement or anything like that. Those all work. There's lots of videos on that. Um, we're gonna talk about this particular one here in a second. So um, I chose a dehumidifier kiln because I live in a neighborhood and I don't have a place that gets a lot of sunshine except for my front yard, but I obviously can't put a huge kiln or even this in my front yard. My wife won't let me. So first question you might have, should I build a solar kiln or should I build a dehumidifier kiln? Which is better? The answer is neither. They're different and they have different pros slash cons associated with each, but they both accomplish the same thing. Solar kilns have to have a sunny location to be efficient, right? Obviously solar. And usually they take up more space and that's to allow the sun in, but they are cheaper to run as you're not paying for electricity to heat your kiln or uh, electricity to run your fans or anything like that because the sun's taking care of all of that. Cons are they take longer to dry the wood. Dehumidifier kilns can be put anywhere you have space and can be as big or small as you want them to be. Um, but a con is you have to pay for electricity to heat it, to run the dehumidifier, to run the fans. And, and you're gonna be paying for that constantly because it's gotta constantly be running. Um, but they are also more consistent in terms of drying speed as it's not dependent upon the sunshine uh, being around. So clouds aren't gonna mess you up. Here's what you need to know that's important, all right? Number one most important thing is it's gotta be big enough that your air can circulate well. For a dehumidifier kiln, the air will flow from the fan through the wood to the dehumidifier, and then the dry air will go back to the fan and pass through the wood again. And that cycle continues, simple. For a solar kiln, the fans blow air in front of the glass or clear plastic where the sun heats it up and then it passes through the lumber, picking up moisture. It's then vented out at the bottom. The fans can either be powered with a solar panel and battery system, or they can just be hardwired in via an outlet. The only other thing to remember for both is that you want to place baffles along the top or any big air gaps on the sides or bottom if you've got lumber up on skids. So this is to make sure that the air is passing through all the wood and not just sitting in one place in the room or only passing through a part of the wood. The better your air flow through all the wood, the more evenly your wood will dry. Here's the inside of my kiln. So my dehumidifier sits right here in this little area that I built for that. Then this fan blows air along the back side of the wood over here to where it hits this side wall in the back, which acts as a baffle and forces the air to come through the wood and then pass back along this side of the lumber back down to the dehumidifier where the whole process repeats. So you don't really have to have the fan on top necessarily as long as you have good air movement. Here I'm putting baffles up to prevent the air from going across the top, forcing it to go through the wood and back to my dehumidifier. Before you stack your wood in there, you're going to want to coat the ends of your wood in anchor seal to avoid checking. Checking is when the wood splits at the end because moisture leaves the end through the end grain much faster than elsewhere and it just causes the wood to split and warp and, and all kinds of defects right there. So pro tip, when you're buying green lumber, buy pieces that are too long expecting to have to cut the ends off. How do you stack the lumber? So you want the wood off the ground, obviously and you want it separated by stickers or slats. Stickers are basically anything, any material that's of uniform length. So I recommend a one by two, just these furring strips you can buy at Home Depot because they're cheap and because they're all the exact same width. How do you space them? You want a maximum of 24 inches between the stickers and you want all your stickers to be lined up as directly on top of one another as possible. This will keep your wood from bowing and twisting. I would err on the side of your stickers being too close together at say 15 inches versus too far apart as the farther apart they are, the higher the chance that the wood will bow in between where the stickers are. So you're gonna to wanna to stack your wood with the longest wood at the bottom and then the shortest wood at the top. Otherwise the overhanging wood will warp, plain and simple. 
There's not a ton of literature on how to space your wood on each row, but you want the air to pass through it all so that it can dry as efficiently as possible. So I recommend leaving a small gap around maybe half an inch between each board on each row. Then you wanna put as much weight on top of your stack as possible, or if you can't fit a bunch of cinder blocks or something up there, you can use ratchet straps over multiple spots on the stack. You wanna be sure that the straps line up with the stickers, that way you're not forcing a bow into your wood by pulling down in the middle of two stickers. Adding weight is the easiest way to help your wood not warp or check as it dries. So there's a ton of information out there about drying schedules and how slow or fast to dry. I've consolidated that and put a couple of helpful charts in the description below that I'm now gonna put on screen to talk about this. This part really only pertains to dehumidifier kilns, so feel free to skip ahead to the next section if you're only interested in solar kilns. Solar kilns dry much slower and therefore you don't really need or have to worry about what I'm about to explain here. Okay, so let me explain this chart. This chart tells you how much water you can take out per day to prevent case hardening. Case hardening happens when you remove too much water too fast and it dries out the outside of the wood, leaving the inside wet. This can cause a lot of issues when you start to cut and use the wood, such as the wood pinching the blade. Okay, so column on the left, relative humidity of the kiln. Column in the middle is the maximum water out per 100 square feet per day at the relative humidity that's in the kiln. And then the column on the right is the equilibrium moisture content of the wood when your kiln is drawing the amount of water out on the matching line of the chart. For example, for 500 square feet of lumber, my dehumidifier will keep the kiln at around 60% relative humidity and around 115 degrees Fahrenheit, which means I can draw up to 2.5 gallons a day out of the wood. My little dehumidifier can only pull around a gallon and a half out per day, so I'm way in the clear. So as the wood becomes drier and the air becomes drier in the kiln, it will pull less moisture out. And so essentially when your kiln is pulling roughly a quarter gallon per 100 square feet a day, and the relative humidity is below 40% in the kiln, your wood is probably around 7% uh, equilibrium moisture content. And that's kind of where you want it. So between six and eight. Obviously it's much easier to just check the moisture content of your wood with a moisture meter, which I'll link the ones I use in the description, they're super simple um, versus, you know, measuring exactly how much water and trying to guesstimate from there. Much easier to just measure, but that gives you kind of a rough idea so that you don't over uh, dry your wood or dry too quickly. Okay, this chart, super easy. Um, it's basically just the relative humidity in percent. So if my kiln is working at 60% relative humidity, then at 100 degrees, which is here, boop, um, the equilibrium moisture content will, will only get down to 10%. That's where it can go to in here. So to get it down to where I want it, around here, which is, um, you know, 6 to 8%, somewhere in there, I have to have it down to 40% in there at about 100 degrees, 115, that's close enough for, my, for this purpose and then it will get the uh, equilibrium moisture content of the wood or just the moisture content of the wood down to where I want it, which is six to 8%. So the only time you really have to worry about this part of the chart is in a really small batch situation. If you've got a ton of lumber in there with a dehumidifier kiln like mine, which is really small, where you're working with a small dehumidifier, you're never going to have an issue drawing too much water out. But if I was to just throw one or two slabs in there, I might run into an issue and might want to pay attention to this a lot more. Uh, remember that it's square foot of surface area that's visible or slash that's where the drying surface of a board and not board foot. For interior projects, you want the moisture content to be around six to 8%. For exterior projects, it can be as high as 11%, but you're still great to just go all the way down to six to 8% just to be safe. How long does it take to dry your lumber? It largely depends on these factors. The initial moisture content of the lumber, how thick the lumber is, how humid your location is, 
which is much more relevant for solar kilns that aren't specifically sucking moisture out of the air. And then the species of wood slash the wood density. White oak dries way slower than cedar. So the other question I had that was big in my decision to build this was, is it worth the investment of both time and money? My answer to that, the short answer is yes. If you have the time and money to build it, it's totally worth it because it will pay for itself super quickly. Example, total cost to build this kiln was just under $1,200. My first, my first load of lumber which filled the kiln around two thirds, so not even a full load. And the current cost of select grade white oak in the nearest place to me, which is like an hour away, it's $9 a board foot to get white oak, which is crazy high. So I bought green, really wet white oak from a local guy for a dollar and 51 cents per board foot. I bought $290 worth of it. So I bought 24 eight foot, uh, two inch by six inch, dimensional, not, not nominal, so an actual two inches by six inches, um, to buy the same quantity at my local dealer, the one that's an hour away, so my local dealer, it would be $1,728 to buy the same amount. So even if the price was to drop in half for that and to be $450 a board foot to buy it from someone else, already kiln dried, I'm still saving, after the cost of what I bought it for, $547 on my first load of lumber. That's that's actually what I did. It's, I saved $547 on my first load. I made half the cost of the kiln back. Just like that. Boom. And this is a tiny kiln. It's not big. If you had a bigger kiln, you'd make it back faster because you can dry more wood, obviously. So in conclusion, it really isn't as hard or as tedious as it sounds to kiln dry your own lumber. If you have any questions, please comment them below and I will do my best to answer all of them. Yeah. Thank you so much.